everyone. So uh, every December 17th through the 23rd, the church gives us what are called the O antiphons, or little short phrases and sentences taken from different places of scripture that help us to reflect more and more on the person of Christ as we make the last preparations for Christmas, for celebrating his coming at Christmas. And so Dan and I uh, decided to uh, give you a little bit of a presentation on each of these O antiphons for each of these seven days right before Christmas and to sing a little bit of, of them and then for me to give you a little bit of a reflection of, of different parts of these antiphons for you to reflect on in, in your own prayer. And so in the liturgy, these antiphons are typically found at evening prayer or vespers every day when um, it's uh, said or sung the Canticle of Mary from the first chapter of Luke, um, which begins, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, or um, in another translation, my soul magnifies the Lord. And so that kind of shows us a little bit of what these antiphons are doing in they're taking an aspect of who we know the Lord to be and magnifying that for us. And, and in that sense, they kind of help us to see a little bit more clearly a certain aspect of the person of Christ. And in that way, hopefully give us an opportunity to, to deepen our hope deepen our expectation for his coming. So we'll start here with um, a short version of the antiphon for today, December 17th. Um, I'll sing it and Dan will play it. And then after that, I'll, I'll reflect a little bit on this antiphon. So this, this antiphon, um, in this antiphon, we hear the title given to Christ, wisdom. And this is not just saying that he has wisdom, even in an you know, ex extraordinary way, but that Jesus himself is the wisdom of God in his, in his person, embodied. Um, and this sort of personification of wisdom, of the wisdom of God, is actually something that runs through a lot of the Old Testament scriptures. And so, for example, in, in part of the text that was taken for this antiphon, in the book of Sirach, we hear, hear wisdom itself speaking actually in the first person, saying, I came forth from the mouth of the Most High. And then we have another idea here of the wisdom kind of proceeding forth from God's mouth like speech. And this idea goes all the way back to the first chapter, the first page of the Bible um, in the story of creation where we hear God speaking his word and then it, it taking place just as he spoke. So, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And so this, this word of wisdom that the Father speaks um, is ultimately the ordering principle of all of creation, of all that exists. Um, and so this is kind of the wisdom that we see personified here in, the, in these great texts. But God shows us something new in Jesus. 
Um, as we hear in the Gospel of John, the first chapter of the Gospel of John, which is actually the Gospel reading for the Mass on Christmas Day, um, we hear, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, not only is that word of wisdom, you know, embodied, uh, personified as a part of the act of creation, but that wisdom is himself God. And it's this word of God's wisdom who became flesh and dwelt among us. And so this is just kind of mind-blowing, just kind of to reflect on on the immensity, the amazingness of what it means for Jesus, the wisdom of God, to come into human flesh. But at the same time, what we recognize in Jesus is that it's not exactly maybe the wisdom that we would expect. It's the wisdom of a child born in a manger. It's the wisdom of a crucified Messiah. It kind of, you know, makes it understandable why we would have a hard time trusting in that wisdom, um, believing in that wisdom, because it's so different from a lot of the other sources of wisdom that we might hear. Um, and so, for example, St. Paul, in his letter, his first letter to the Corinthians, writes the following. He, he writes, We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So, are you being called? Is the Lord calling you with his foolish wisdom? and calling out to you to recognize his son. As we conclude this time of reflection, I, I invite you to, to ask, ask yourself in your own prayer, you know, what is an area in my life where I am in need of God's wisdom to direct me, to give me the gift of prudence, um, to show me the way? And so now I'm going to I'm going to sing another version of this antiphon. First, the Latin chant version. And then Dan and I are going to play a verse of uh, the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, which actually takes its verses as sort of a paraphrase of these O antiphons. And as we sing these two pieces, um, I invite you to just continue reflecting on, on the wisdom of God and how, how you might need that wisdom in your life. O sapientia, que exore altissimi prodisti, attingens a fine usque ad finem fortiter, suaviter disponens que omni Docendum nos viam prudentiae. O come, O wisdom from. 